commit any crime and get away with it, right? It's like, that's an interesting concept. Like, one night, commit any crime, get along, away with it. What would you do? The answer in all of these movies is just commit murder, right? It's been like five or six of these movies, and there's yet to be one that's like, The Purge, libel. <laughs> the Purge, slander and character defamation. Uh, <laughs> I know what I would do. If I had one night out of the year, I could commit any crime, get away with it. I would uh, commit stolen valor. <laughs> I'd just go into an Outback Steakhouse be like, Yeah, I was on SEAL Team 6. <laughs> I killed Gaddafi. Give me a free blooming onion. Uh, <laughs> no, I wrote that joke, actually, because I, th I, this is true. I had a dream the purge was real. Uh, and all these people, they're chasing me. They're trying to kill me. I ran into my apartment, locked the door, hid under my desk, and I did my taxes wrong. The government owed me $8,000. I was so excited. <laughs> then I woke up. I'm like, oh, the purge isn't real. Uh, that's how sad my life is, by the way. I was like, $8,000? That would change everything. <laughs> that would pay off some of my debt. Uh, no, it's okay. College, it's, it was worth it. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, no. <laughs> we got uh, anyone here fucking with hobbies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where's some hobbies people have? Sign painting. Sign painting? That's interesting. I know that guy. <laughs> he paints signs for me. No. <laughs> Says, this guy is cool. <laughs> I, that is stupid. I, I want to I, I wanna paint signs and put them on my art. This guy is cool and has a big dick. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd be popular. No, that's fun. That's just funny to me. That's... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I need more hobbies. I don't really have any hobbies. Uh, a hobby I'm thinking about picking up is uh, actually I want to I wanna start heckling Shakespeare plays. <laughs> I want to start going to Shakespeare plays halfway through, just standing up, just be like, hold on. What the fuck did he just say? <laughs> Why the hell is he talking like that? <laughs> now, hold on one second. Are those syllables going from stressed to unstressed? Is this whole damn play gonna be an IMB pantameter? Goddamn! That's uh. Well, we'll let <laughs> That's great. I get the crowd going. One loud radio fucks it up. That's okay. <laughs> that guy's a Shakespeare fan. I don't know. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't uh. Yeah, that was a character. That's guy who knows what iambic pentameter is, but doesn't know every Shakespeare plays in it. Uh, I don't know if that's funnier or if it's funnier to like heckle a Shakespeare play where you like know too much, right? You give away, you're like, keep washing, Lady Macbeth. <laughs> keep washing those hands, bitch. <laughs> you ain't ever getting that spot out. <laughs> it represents your guilt, bitch. Uh, <laughs> and it's all right to call her a bitch because she's played by a man. It's not misogynistic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, this is this is a weird this is a weird phenomenon I noticed. I, anyone notice like any song once it go, once it's in a Shrek movie it just becomes a Shrek song, <laughs> right? Like the other day I was I was driving with my girlfriend and uh, that song "Just the Way You Are" by Billy Joel came on the radio and I was like, oh, this is my parents' song. They like played this at their wedding, right? This represents their love. My girlfriend's like, this is a Shrek song. Uh, <laughs> It's just weird, like, the, all the Shrek movies are made up of songs that people wrote. Like, they wrote about the trials and tribulations of their life. And now it's all just swept away. Like, there's even, there used to be a YouTube video that was, uh, it was called Four Dutchmen Sing the Shrek Song, right? It was a video, they sang that song Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. It's like a deep, powerful song. But now these guys, these Dutch guys, they don't even speak English. They're speaking, speaking Dutch, then they break out into that song. They think, they think it's, uh, it's about farts and burps, right? They don't... They have no idea that the context of it. I don't know. That Trek was intense for me when it came out. Like I, my family was very protective, very overprotective. The first time I saw Shrek, he's like making, uh, you know, candles out of his earwax. I was, I felt like I was watching a snuff film. I was like, what's going on? They can fart on camera now. Oh my god! <laughs> Get me out of here. Uh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to buy a gun. Uh, <laughs> Think about buying a gun. Uh, I mostly want a gun just for like silly gags, right? Like I just want a funny way to get out of like conversations I don't want to be a part of anymore, right? Like the next time I'm at a party, someone's telling me about their boring data entry job, I can just pull out my handgun and be like, oh my god. Ah! 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 <laughs> 
And I'll be like, don't worry, it's not loaded. <laughs> but this is a learning experience. Be more interesting. Uh, and learning pickleball doesn't count. I don't know. Uh, it's popular. Uh, I, uh, we got couples in here. Hey, you two? Sir, you? Well, you, you look, I don't know, you look scared. I don't know. And maybe I shouldn't have But sir, what, what's the secret you keep from her? <laughs> no, I think everyone, I think everyone keeps secrets from their significant other. I think everyone does. Uh, it's really, like, bad and, like, messed up if it's, like, cheating, right? That's messed up. I don't do that. But I do have to, like, I do have to hide from my girlfriend how lame I am. I don't know if this is relatable. Like, the other day, I'm by myself. I'm watching a YouTube video. The YouTube video I'm watching is ranking all of the Donkey Kong characters. It's ranking the Donkey Kong characters from the least evil to the most evil. I'm watching that, and I'm like, my girlfriend can never know I saw this. <laughs> Donkey Kong, by the way, if you're wondering, Donkey Kong's right in the middle. He's not the most or least evil. Um, because, you know, he saves the island, but he does it for bananas, right? He's not altruistic. He's motivated by greed. Um, now, after I said that, you could hear a noise. There was a slight noise. I don't know if you picked up on it. That was the sound of every pussy drying up in 35 miles. Because uh, you can't talk to girls and want to talk about Donkey Kong facts. Like... The only reason I even have a girlfriend is because of like online dating, right? Like I met her online, I can like, you know, put the best version of myself out there. Like before that, I try to pick up girls, I'd go to a bar, I'd be drunk, go up to a girl at the bar, just try to talk about Donkey Kong lore. <laughs> just go up like shit face, be like, uh, you know, technically Donkey Kong Jr. is Donkey Kong's dad. <laughs> and I got the YouTube video that proves it. <laughs> The girl turns to the bartender and is like, I need an angel shot. Uh, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> you don't know what that is. You've, it's been called on you. Uh, no. Uh, I, uh, let's see. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I had a strict family growing up. Like, we couldn't curse at home, right? Uh, I feel like that's kind of common. But, like, if we curse, we have to put soap in our mouth. I feel like that's, you know, that's fairly common. But most people who have to put soap in their mouth, I feel like I hear people talk about they had bars of soap that they would put in their mouth. But, like, my family never had bars of soap. So, like, if we curse, my mom would just pump hand soap into a spoon and make us eat it. So, I don't know. So, I couldn't curse. And then, uh, so I was always looking for, like, uh, you know, curse words that, like, you know, these uh, loophole curse words that go, you know, they go around. It's like you're cursing, but you're not really saying anything. Like, you know, instead of fuck, people will say, like, freak or frick, right? So I'm like, okay, this is great. I'll, I use these curse words. These aren't real curse words. I'll say them at home. I won't get in trouble, right? But I found out the hard way. You say it at home. It's just like saying a real curse word. You still get in trouble. You still got to eat soap, right? Like, I'll give you an example. Like, I found out the hard way. Like, I came home from school. I was like, hey, mom, there's this new girl at school, and uh, I really want to freak her up the ass and come in her face. And... Uh, <laughs> It turns out it really didn't matter that I didn't say fuck. Uh, now, I, uh, I think work stinks. This is, uh, I'm going to end with my political joke. Uh, work sucks. Uh, <laughs> I think it should be easier to get time off work. Um, I actually think uh, women should get uh, paid leave when they're on their periods. Um, yeah, a lot of women like that. I'm not going to lie, though. It's, it's, it's really more for me. Because, like, if all the women in the office, they all take time off on their periods, they're all going to sync up. And then all the women take the same day off, and we get boys' day at the office. <laughs> it's like, fuck yeah, boys' day. Now we get a rough house. <laughs> now we get to tickle each other, and it's not weird. Uh, and that's a cultural thing, by the way. I hate it when people say, like, straight white guys don't have any culture. It's like, no, we have culture. Our culture is being gay, ironically, with our friends. <laughs> we tickle each other. <laughs> we kiss each other in the mouth. We're like, what if? <laughs> what if we like this? <laughs> We hold each other's cocks, your buddy cocks get hard, your buddy's cock gets hard, you're like, you're making it weird. Uh... <laughs> All right, that's my time. Let's give it up for Lucy Benina. Thank you very much. It's like, it's daring to hear the word cock, like, come A, from Charlie's mouth, and then B, like, just when I can see the, everybody, the whites of everybody's eyes. <laughs> it's tough. Um, are you guys ready for your next comic? Yeah! Uh, your next comment is very, very funny. Very, very, very funny. And she is also my neighbor. Um, and I think that that's pretty cool in itself. So give it up for Liz Davenport. Yeah. I'm glad she 
said it with like a question mark. Like we don't live 200 feet from each other. Liz Davenport. It is my name. It is my name. I would I would make up a cooler one if I could, but my name's already cool as hell. Yeah, a little louder. Okay, cool. Um, also, I know you can hear me. Just know I see you. I'm just not gonna look at you. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. Uh, thank God Pride is almost over. Am I right? <laughs> My fingers hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do a lot of crafts. So. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I would like to say that I made these pants for a Pizza Bones gig, but I didn't. Uh, I just had these pants. I would, I would have, but I already had them. So, um, so I'm actually gay. I do crafts. That's the only litmus. Not all of us have to get laid, okay? Thank you. It's clap now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, you know what's pretty gay? Uh, baseball. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you don't think baseball's gay, you've never been to a minor league game uh, where the stakes have never been lower. It's so good. They're putting on their own little play for us, you know? Hey, hey, can you pick that up? It's trash. Thanks. It was blowing around, guys. Let's do better. Let's be better. Um, but baseball's so gay. They wear their little uniforms. This is the seventh time they've played the Akron Rubber Ducks this week. And they're pretending that it's important. Like, that's theater. That's theater. Whenever a man dressed as a man riding a flamingo throws hot dogs into the audience, that's gay, guys. I'm sorry, that's gay as hell. You've seen their little pants, right? Like, sports are so homoerotic, not because of them tackling each other, but because of the pants. Name a sport that has loose pants. There probably is, uh, just you're not fast enough. Okay, um, I love them. I, you know, I'm a patron of the arts whenever I'm housing my chicken tenders and squirrely fries, okay? Whenever I'm cheering, I am an ally. Uh, so, um, uh, does it sound like I'm talking to a fan? Because I am. Does it sound like that to you? It does okay. over here. It does over there, if I do this. Yeah, that's fun. I should do that the whole time, right? <laughs> I won't. Um, uh, uh, you guys. I liked the noise. <laughs> Put it back. Thank you, thank you. Okay, you, you fucked up the angle, but that's okay. I'll pretend I'm in a music video. Uh, thank you, thank you everyone for my fan break. Um, so, White Lotus, right? Season three, we're looking forward to it. That's what everybody was saying, right? Everyone was saying, except we're gonna miss Jennifer Coolidge, rip, spoilers, you know, whatever. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge. So amazing. I'm so good at segways, guys. She is so underrated. Like, she's been acting for so many years. She was one of Seinfeld's first girlfriends, if anyone remembers Deep Cut, before she had the voice, you know? She just sounds normal. She is wasted on us because we only put her in comedic roles, and she is genius, okay? As a dramatic actress, she's unstoppable. My cutie little Peppa Pig. Like, close your eyes and imagine, I can see you, close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes, imagine it's Jennifer Coolidge on a boat. Thank you for participating. <laughs> she's on a boat, she's wearing a cute little outfit. I see you, close your eyes, dude. Um, she's wearing a cute little outfit, she's on a ship, and she goes, the thing about a shark is, it's got black eyes. Lifeless eyes, like a doll's eyes. You weren't closing your eyes over there, so that's why I'm not. I'm not talking to you guys. You can open your eyes now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all of my uh, exes are juggalos because uh, they love this insane clown pussy. <laughs> Uh, at this point, the only time I actually get touched is when I like go to the doctor. 
Like right now, I've been touched, starved, beaten, and asked to renounce God and my country. But when I go see my doctor, he asks me to sit on that sexy little deli paper, you know, and I scoot up. And he asks me to open up as far as I can go, which isn't very far. <laughs> and I do, and I say, give it to me. Give it to me. Adderall. <laughs> right? Because I know... I know you actually have, have wondered whose dick do I have to suck to get an Adderall prescription, right? Well, it's Dr. Bala's. <laughs> I should stop using his real name because someone was like, Rishi Bala? And I was like, shit! <laughs> That's my plug! <laughs> Leave him alone! Uh, so yeah, I'm a solo artist. I'd say, um, and I found that, you know, masturbating while you're drunk is a, a lot like eating crab legs. In that you're like 10 minutes in, your fingers are cramping up, and you're like, is this even worth it? <laughs> and the smell is horrible! <laughs> Not to mention all the butter. Oh, God. Um, I'm gonna gauge this next joke. Uh, do, you guys, do you guys remember that song, Pussy Bob by Caillou? No? Okay. Well, it goes a little something like this. Pussy ball by Caillou. Um, I don't know what else. But Caillou is this little, like, bald bitch. You know, he's a little shithead kid. Uh, anyways, he's bald. That's it. So that's why the song goes the way it does. Pussy ball by Caillou. Um, I hate that song. I hate that song because not everybody's pussy is bald like Caillou, okay? Some people's pussy is bald like George Costanza. There's like nothing on top but like a lot on the sides for some reason. Weird little guy. Um, his glasses! He can't see without his glasses! Hey Jody. Run. Uh, that's my girlfriend across the street. Say hi, Jody. Hi, Jody. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I uh, am not Jewish. Oh. <laughs> but I worked at I worked at the JCC, so um, I get it. <laughs> okay, Baruch Atah and I, I get it. Um, but I love the term culturally Jewish. Don't think I didn't forget you. I know you're there. Okay. Yeah, I support you. I love culturally Jewish. You know, if you if you Google that, it's actually a picture of Larry David that pops up. <laughs> That's real and true and honest. Um, but I think I, I'd be like culturally Catholic, if anything, because they have like those fancy clothes and like incense and like wine at 10 a.m. Anyone Catholic? Okay, you're lying. Um, me neither. Uh, but mostly it's because I like owe my life to Catholicism, in a way. Because I was conceived via a pull-up method, so, you know. Uh, I am Christian in the literal sense that I am like Christ. Because like Christ, I, uh, am really good with kids. Um, pretty good with carpentry, and, um, I only have 12 friends, so. <laughs> really, it's about the feet, though. It's the foot thing that we have in common. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. I also hate figs. Um, if anyone read the Bible, there's that part he hates figs. I also hate figs, so. Thank you. Um, I'm, if you can't tell by my tomato pants, I'm a bisexual. Um, that just means I'm afraid of men and women, though. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid of women because I have no game. Um, none of you were surprised. You just heard me talk for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and I'm afraid of men because they always want to talk to me about ska. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but like I keep making this joke and it keeps happening. I don't know if I'm manifesting at this point. I'll be like, oh. I don't know how to get out of it. That's a, actually just a cry for help, guys. Um, the worst part about being gay, though, besides um, being cooler than everyone else and better, is that sometimes your crushes 
like each other. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. And I don't know how to play Magic the Gathering, so I can't be polyamorous. <laughs> it's so sad, guys. It's like I, I like men-ish, you know? It's like I, I've lost two crushes because I watched men consume dairy. So it's like very vaguely. Like I like them like I like the dentist. It's not the top of my list, but every like six months or so, you gotta get drilled, right? You know? It's like a chore. <laughs> uh, who thinks we should bring back natural selection? <laughs> If you've lived with a straight man, you should be hooping and hollering. I had a straight roommate. Also, his name was Dylan. Gross. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> okay. Um, and I walked into the kitchen one time, and he held out um, a, play, a, a plate of triangles that he had baked and was sad. And I was like, okay, what is this? And he's like, oh, my crescent rolls. <laughs> He didn't know that you had to roll up crescent dough into a crescent roll shape in order for them to bake his crescent rolls. And if this were any other century, he would be long dead. If God were real, she would have had him murdered in the Great Molasses Flood of 1919. Which is real and so scary. Slow, painful death. Um, for the most part, I don't date guys because I'm a nanny, and, like, that's enough people in my life who, uh, don't know how to, like, wash their ass, you know? <laughs> Forget it, Jake! It's Chinatown! Do I need a better quote? People don't know Chinatown? What's another movie? Yeah. A good, good, oh, never mind, that's, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna give an offer I can't refuse. The end of my set. Whoa! Oh, something. Um, you're like a Cabbage Patch Kid come to life, huh? <laughs> Truly. Um, was that fun for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Pretty weird. Yeah. There's more where that came from. Don't you worry one little bit. Uh, your next comic is uh, a former, so I teach a stand-up class, I know, uh, <laughs> shocker, uh, but uh, I do, I teach a stand-up class and she was like the best student in the class, don't tell anybody else in the class, um, but give it up for Jess Harvey, she's very fun. <laughs> okay, I'm super happy, oh gosh, um, okay. Okay. Super happy that Lucy just said that because I've never done this before. So if this is terrible, just be kind and smile and be like, it's fine, sweetie, you tried. Um, that would be really kind. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. That's so funny. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, so the last time, I've only been to Pizza Bones once, and the last time I was here, um, it was like a friend date. I don't know if you've tried to make friends as an adult. It's very difficult. Has anybody tried this? Yeah, so it, was, yeah, it is terrible, thank you. Um, and so it was a friend of a friend. So we come here and we're like, okay, let's go to Pizza Bones. It was in November, it was over here because it was whatever, it doesn't matter. She tells me, because she's like, I can't tell anybody in my real life and you're like superfluous, but she's married and she's been married for like 10 years and she's like, I think I like girls. And I was like, okay, that's awesome, I'm super, okay, what are we gonna do about that? And she's like, okay, um, I think I'm going to tell my husband that I want to break up with him. He's like, okay, that, that's great. So then I text her like every once in a while, like, you still good? And then two months later, we saw each other at Fanboy because she's much more clued in than I am. I had to Google where it was at. And um, she was like, I told him I want a divorce last night. I was like, why are you hanging out with me? Like, I can't, this is a lot. And now I learned she's full on lesbian now and she lives in Austin, she U-hauled, I don't know what that means, but if you're like a lesbian thing where you like get a U-haul and move in together. If I'm explaining that wrong, I'm sorry, is that right? Thank you, Lucy, yeah, I am so cultured. Um, anyway, so I'm just telling you all that, so if you wanna unpack some sort of sexual adventure that you haven't admitted to anybody, I don't know any of you, so except for the people I do know, please don't share with me. Um, find someone else, but you can tell me. Um, 
So that's fun. So I recently, I uh, recently went on a trip, and every like bad thing that could happen, that's not terrible, but like not ideal, did happen. So I'm wondering, do you all have any suggestions? What are some things you're like? Oh, I don't hope that doesn't happen, but it would be okay. I won't be able to hear you if you said anything, so that's awesome. <laughs> Hopefully you said these things. Sitting in the middle seat. You're like, I don't really want to do that, but okay. Um, if you miss your connection because of some weather delay, and if they lose your luggage. All three of those things happened to me on the same day, and I was like, okay. So I have really good luck. Um, this is not planned well. Okay, I'm going to work on it, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm sitting in the middle seat, and... I um, I have sleep apnea. I know you can't tell from my body shape, but I struggle to sleep and breathe at the same time. Um, I just feel like admitting it is a good thing because there's people out there that are snoring every night and they're like, don't talk about it. It's okay, you can talk about it, Adam. I know, actually Jared, Jared snores. Um, sorry, too much, okay. Anyway, so I was like, I'm gonna wear the CPAP machine on the flight. Yeah, I, I know, I know, you're mortified for me. I'm gonna crawl into a hole. Um, yeah, that's fun. Okay, so I was like, let's do it. So if you don't know anything about CPAP machines, um, that's cool for you, first off, but I know a lot now. So you have to plug in this whole machine, and then, also this is on the tiny little tray table, and I'm in the middle seat, and I'm unpacking just tons of shit. These people are very concerned. And then you plug it into like, um, like a, con like a console, basically. Then you take a tube, this is your third item you've unpacked, and you take a tube that is then now tethered to the top of your head, and you're in a full mask. Like, you cannot breathe. I've also got on headphones and a neck pillow, and I'm like, I can't, I can't. I sit like that for five hours. Um, I made no friends, as you can imagine. Um, so that was just a lot, um, but like, whatever. Also, they're supposed to take water. It doesn't matter, but mine's broken, so it didn't. That was like a lot. So then we missed our connection. We end up in Dublin, and um, it's just a fiasco. And we have to get rebooked, and it is just a nightmare. And I'm a teacher, so I'm with 12 students and another teacher. Two of these kids, their flight is not working. So the other teacher I'm with, he decides, he's in charge of the goddamn trip, and I'm not. And he's like, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next terminal. You stay with them. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he starts texting me, he's like, the tour guide says that I'm allowed to leave you if you all don't get it figured out. I'm like, what? Like, I don't even know his children's last names. Like, I just met them this morning. Like, I don't think you should leave me in Dublin with them. Um, and the lady that reorganizing the flight is like, don't worry until 15 minutes before the flight. We get to that point. And I'm like, ma'am, you said not to worry. She's like, you should panic now, actually. This is not good. It's like, okay, cool. Meanwhile, one of the children I'm with, ch children, she's an adult, well, they're an adult, but they are like, wait, my brother has my anti-anxiety medicine and they're at the other terminal. What should I do? I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. You should, you should start freaking out too. Um, it's gonna be fine, but not. We end up getting our flight and the lady, the flight attendant lady or whomever she is, she runs with us to the terminal. If they're concerned, that's bad. That's, I can tell you that. So we end up making it, and my friend, whom I love, who I eat lunch with every day, he's like, I was definitely gonna leave you. No, it was, you were gonna be lost. I was like, awesome. So I haven't mentioned this, but at Charlotte, they forced me to gate check my bag. I, I was the first one. They were like, yeah, we're full. I was like, of course you are. Okay, cool. They were like, your bag will get to Vienna. It's no big deal. Don't worry. They didn't make it to Vienna. Um, yeah. It's, anyway, so then I'm on a 10-day trip to Europe, and I have to buy clothes every two days in Vienna. Where, yeah, uh-huh. So where do you go shopping? You go to H&M. So if you like my outfit, I wore this for you all, you can go to H&M and buy this also. You're welcome. They're going to QVC now. Um, I should get like some commission if you go. But anyways, there were three of us who lost our bags. Um, two of them arrived like a day later. Mine didn't, that's cool. It showed up a week after I got back, so that's awesome. But my friend, I had to buy him clothes because they fucked up our flight so bad he was on a totally different flight. So we go to H&M, me and this student go to H&M and um, they're like 19 and they're like, um, I don't want to contribute to fast fashion so I'm only going to buy underwear. It's like, the fuck? Okay, well, uh, I'm 35 and I need to buy full on clothes. I can't, I, I'm going to contribute. So anyway, so then I have to buy for this other teacher who I work with because he's on a different flight. 
And I asked the student who goes, uh, their pronouns are they, them, and I'm like, okay, so do you think Joe wears boxers or briefs? Because we have to buy clothes for him. And this student is like, I don't know the fucking difference and I don't want to learn thinking about Joe and his penis. And I was like, oh my God, okay, all right, cool. I picked briefs and I was right. Okay, so you were wondering, yeah. So then, um, long story short, I'm just carrying around all these clothes from H&M and I get to my room and I got lost in, oh, I didn't get lost, I got stuck in the stairwell because it's a whole thing. If you've been to Europe, like the stairwells only go down for safety, which makes sense, but I didn't know that. So I walk up the six flights and then you can't get onto the sixth floor and I'm banging on they're like, please let me out, like what time? Mind you, I've got my CPAP machine, my book bag, and $300 of H&M clothes. So I get me out of the fucking stairwell. We've been traveling for 30 hours. I get to my room, and it's covered like in plywood. You can see the room, but it's like down a little hallway, and you can't get to it. One of the children on the trip, he's super autistic, and he's like, I see your room. You're right. You can't get to it. And I'm like, I know, buddy. Yeah, what should I do? He's like, I don't know. It's like, awesome. So I go back downstairs. At this point, I start to cry, because I'm like, I, I can't take it so much. And I get to the hotel lobby, and I'm sobbing. And this lovely man from Vienna is like, oh, sweetie, this is bad. And I'm like, yeah, I know, it is, thank you. He then walks me to my room. This is the second time in a day, and a different adult is like, you're struggling. Sweetie, you need, um, you need help. I'll take that help, thank you. Um, so I get to my room, and then I'm like, I just need a shower. It will be fine. Like, life isn't that bad. You know, I'm fine, like I'm safe, it's all good. And so then I try on my new clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you've been to H&M recently, but they only sell um, crop tops. <laughs> yeah, you're right, they do, they only sell that. So then I try on my new pajamas, the makeshift pajamas, and they, if you've seen a toddler like walking around and their stomachs are hanging out like little baby Buddhas, I'm like, that's what I look like. I'm like, this is awesome. I then had to look like that the whole rest of the trip. And I sent a picture to my mom and she's like, your stomach's out. That's all she said. And I was like, yep, I know that mom, thank you. That was super helpful. Um, so then I'm like, it's okay. Also my hairbrush is lost. So I'm like pulling out my hair in the shower, which is not a big deal unless you have long hair and you know that hurts. Um, then I'm like, okay, I can turn this day around. I'll just turn on the TV and watch, I'll listen to the radio. I don't know why I thought that would help. And I'm like, it'll be fun, I'll listen to like, German music, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm in Vienna, like, your problems are not real problems, get over yourself. The, uh, they only listen to American music, mm -hmm. yep. What's the first song that comes on? What is the first song I hear in Vienna? You're right, CeeLo Green, fuck you. That was the funny first song, so thank you, have a great night, thank you. Great, she's got a very firm handshake. <laughs> that was great, keep it going for Jess, that was amazing. That's crazy, that just happened to you too. <laughs> you didn't even workshop that story or nothing, you know? All right, are you guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. Your next comic is, uh, she was also in a class that I taught and she is an, uh, she's a stand-up comic now for real. Uh, give it up for Aaliyah. Hi everyone, my name's Aaliyah. I was not uh, the favorite of the stand-up class that was here. <laughs> Just so you guys know, in case I was here before. All right, I, I genuinely appreciate, like between me and you, like I really needed that, all right. <laughs> I love compliments, right? Who doesn't love a good compliment, you know? Like, I don't mean to brag, but when I go to the hairstylist, she always tells me that I have such pretty curls and when I go to the get my eyebrows done, she always tells me that she's jealous of my natural thickness. And when I go to the gynecologist, he always tells me that he wants to rip out my IUD because he's confident that it's causing my depression. It's just like cute little things. My gynecologist, but that's true, but also so is this. His name is Dr. Danny Shaban. That's how he introduces himself, Dr. Danny Shaban. And I think that he goes by Danny Shaban in fear of being called Dan Shaban, the vagina man. <laughs> Just a thing I have. I haven't asked him about this. <laughs> um, 
I don't have any tattoos. Do you guys have any tattoos? Right on. Richmond is a pretty tattooed city. I know I look like I should have like an intricate chess piece of a bug I never touch, like a <laughs> scarab or a moth. But like, I don't know. Maybe if I had less anxiety or a worse relationship with my dad. <laughs> There is a tattoo that I've always wanted, though, since I was a teenager, and it's a portrait of Gary Busey on my left thigh. Whatever face you're imagining, that's the one. I haven't seen any of his movies. My fascination stems from watching Celebrity Fit Club with my mom growing up. Are you guys familiar? Okay, Celebrity Fit Club was a show where they rounded up a group of C-list celebrities, overweight, and they put them in a weight loss competition. The winner lost the most weight at the end, and then the losers each week lost the least weight and they were put up for elimination. I don't know why this show is allowed to exist, but I was fascinated watching Gary Busey trying to convince the judges that he was turning fat to muscle so fast that of course he was gaining weight. He was manic. He refused to take his meds, and he showed up with a suitcase full of loose change and highlighters. As a mentally ill person myself, he made me feel safe. I have to wait until he dies to get the tattoo, though, because I need to make sure that I'm comfortable with like all the crazy shit he's done, because I crunched the numbers on the cover-up, and it's tough, all right? It's like Nick Nolte. It's like Eileen Wernos. <laughs> or it's O.J. Simpson. Uh, is anyone familiar with Kickback Jacks? All right, right on. That's okay. I, I worked there for a long time. It's kind of like if Hooters and Buffalo Wild Wings had a black baby. <laughs> so <laughs> there was, like, a lot of crazy shit I saw there. We had this woman on the line, like, not a lot of teeth, but a lot of personality. And she used to talk about herself at length. But the thing she talked about the most was her bum-ass baby daddy, Twista. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, like, overnight celebrity, like, slow jams, like... Twista, like 1999 Guinness Book of World Record holder for fastest English speaking rapper, Twista? You'd be correct. Also a very talented ventriloquist, I learned she never mentioned. She would go on and on that he was always truck calling and begging to take her back and like whisk her away to a better life in like Chicago, I guess, but she wanted to stay in Virginia and work on the line. Her son washed dishes there, and whenever he, she said something that he really agreed with, he would slap her on the ass and exclaim, you goddamn right, that's my mama. <laughs> there was a day when a Cowboys fan ripped a toilet out of the floor. I don't remember if she was like pissed that they lost or like really excited that they won. I just know that she knew that the toilet had to go. <laughs> The craziest night I worked there, though, uh, my manager asked me if I could close because another girl had an accident and she needed to go home. And I said, sure. And I saw the girl at the server station and I said, hey, baby, uh, I heard that you need to get out of here. Is there anything I can do to help? And she said, did he tell you? <laughs> I said, no. He didn't tell me anything. He just said, you need to get out of here. I'm wondering if there's anything I can do to help facilitate that. And she looked up at me. She was very small. And her eyes were full of tears, and she said, I trusted a toot. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> and she explained that she was on the floor doing her job, presumably talking to a table, and then she let out a toot, a little fart, if you will. But it wasn't a toot. It was poop. It was poop in her pants, poop in her little jean shorts, because that was our uniform. She went on to explain, without me asking any further questions, that she went to the bathroom, cleaned herself up, threw away her underwear, and got back on the floor. Honestly, model employee. Until she trusted another two. <laughs> Trusted too, too many toots, if you ask me. This is a weird thing to say. <laughs> too, too many toots. Two more toots than I would have trusted. The moral of the story is they still made her roll silver. Thank you so much, y'all. My name's Leah.
for me at least. Um, wow. Yep. This dead waitress shitting herself. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that happened to my brother too. He was a server for years. You probably recognize him if you've ever been to Citizen Burger Bar uh, in Carytown. He shit his pants at work, threw his underwear into the men's bathroom trash can, and returned to work. And if I know my brother, he didn't wash his hands. <laughs> Are you that? <laughs> we are winding down on comedy. We have one more little guest spot, and then uh, we have your final comic. Are you guys ready to get this show? Woo! Your next comic, he just showed up, and he's just so funny. I love supporting little local comics who support shows, so give it up for Randolph Washington Jr., everybody. Firm lesbian handshake. <laughs> So uh, normally, I want to start my set. I have this like, set up about my family, about how I'm gay and I'm black, I'm basically a superhero and all that stuff. Um, it usually endears you all to me, so I can tell like the more offensive stuff. I don't have time, it's a guest spot. So just like, just assume you already love me. <laughs> all right? Um, I don't know what I'm telling you. Anyway, so okay, have, uh, have you guys heard of this person called Taylor Swift? No, okay, I'll, uh, you know, um, is anyone here uh, in the audience? Oh, is anyone here in the audience uh, love Taylor Swift? Okay, a couple. Does anyone here in the audience hate Taylor Swift? Oh wow! Honestly, Richmond usually is pretty loud for that. I, I, whatever, Richmond is not her fan. But anyway, I used to be a Taylor Swift hater. I did until I realized how important her work is. And like by her work, I don't mean her music, and I don't mean her acting, obviously. <laughs> I mean for community service. And that service is, of course, keeping white women occupied. Because <laughs> you see, like, you, you all, you know this, you're a very powerful force, you know? And she keeps your aggression focused on, like, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> and that white, that British guy who played Loki. And that other British guy who can't dress. And I truly feel like without Taylor Swift, that, uh, the white women would have been like too chaotic and there would have been three times as many white women at January 6th. <laughs> My country would have fallen. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't think of her as a pop star, I think of her as a patriot. Uh, side note, do you guys think Taylor Swift has ever like met a black person? And I don't mean like share like a, like a elevator with a black person. I mean like looked at one of us in the eye acknowledged that we were like another human being. Because like, Sometimes like my dog is a big German Shepherd, and when he sees a really small dog, he'll go into like prey mode because he thinks it's like a rabbit, and he doesn't realize it's another dog until he's close and he can smell it. And I feel like that's probably how Taylor Swift sees black people. Like from far away, she's scared. But once once he can smell the cocoa butter, she's like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, all right, here. Uh, I think representation is really important uh, in uh, media and stuff. And I was thinking about how there's one really important television show that like uh, was really important for a lot of people in my generation. And the show is called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> yeah, I already know it. And like there's a lot of amazing characters you, you can look up to. Because there's Buffy, who's a vampire slayer. And there's Willow, who's a witch. And there's Anya, who's a vengeance demon. And there's Xander, who's useless. <laughs> and 11 year old me was watching that show and I was like, I'm useless. <laughs> Finally, someone like me on television. Like, Xander did a lot for like the community that is like the friend who brings nothing to the group. Yeah, like those of us who win as a potluck, we bring napkins. <laughs> like, we saw ourselves represented in Xander Harris. Um, another fictional character I always felt myself seen in was Cyclops from the X-Men. Um, I told you I, I relate a lot to like the white guys with the fandom hates. Uh, but I like Cyclops because like we, we're very really similar. Like, just like Cyclops, I grew up playing with Billy Two Shoes. Uh, just like Cyclops, I'm a member of a marginalized community. Just like Cyclops, I got radicalized at a later age. And just like Cyclops, I am currently a domestic terrorist. <laughs> All right. Um, how much time do I have? I have one minute. Um, okay, well, it's not enough time for my Catholic joke. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I will instead uh, go out on this. Um, anyone here ever have sex with a white person? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, it's an increasingly popular hobby. Um, <laughs> one fun fact about white people is that uh, throughout the year, they have this ability to change color. 
they're a lot like stouts in that way. Uh, it's kind of like a camouflage. Um, and once I was sleeping with a white guy, and I started laughing, which you shouldn't do. <laughs> and he goes, hey, what's wrong? And I'm like, no, nothing's wrong. Just like, it looks like I'm balls deep in Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> uh, you've been amazing. You've been going for your killer host. show and she looked so gay that I pointed her out because I was like look at this fucking dyke right here and then I made her stand up and then everyone was like yeah she's really a dyke and then um and long story short now she does stand-up comedy so give it up for your next comic Hannah Land Second, we're gonna put this down and then we're not gonna talk about it anymore. <laughs> Did you get it? Sort of the vibe? Okay, yeah, I am a dyke. Hey. <laughs> um, everybody's here, everybody's here. You're here. Bobby's here. Everybody say hey Bobby. Uh, Bobby's from Boston. Anybody been there? Okay. I haven't. Bobby's here. My therapist is here. No just kidding, she just moved to Boston. Um, my dad said maybe. <laughs> and maybe does include no, I'm learning now. So that's fine. Um, I'm trying to say um less, so if you, if you hear me say um, if you wouldn't mind just Venmoing me $5, that way I know I did it. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get famous. I think it's going good so far. Um, and the only way to get famous these days is to get good on TikTok. And the only way to get good on TikTok is with crowd work. So I'm gonna do some of that, if that's all right. Um, what's your job? I'm a writer. writer, what do you write? Boring retirement stuff. Awesome, boring retirement <laughs> stuff, he said. Okay, um, <laughs> did you come here on purpose? <laughs> uh, yeah. To see who? To eat pizza. All right, I'm going pizza. Okay, so crowd work usually goes like that for me, right? And so then I said, all right, I'll turn it around. I'll say you guys can ask me questions. So does anyone have any questions for me? That's okay, I prepared some. What's up? Are you That's feeling homophobic coming from you. I'm gonna move on. Um, I prepared some questions ahead of time. So um, if you, yeah, you. When I ask if anybody has any questions, do you wouldn't mind saying me and then reading this? <laughs> and then uh, you're next, okay? okay. Yeah, that one, that one will do. And then we got one more, so here for you. So anyway, I've been trying to work on crowd work, right? And it's so hard. So, so I've decided I'll ask the audience for questions. Does anyone have any questions for me? OMG, what's up? How do I think this is going? Good. <laughs> Any others? Me. Oh, what's up? Okay, fuck Mary Kill. Your wife, Olivia. Me, the reader of this question. Right. Or the person sitting next to me, the reader. Oh, shit. Did we all hear that? Oh. Get up here. <laughs> Fascinating question, fuck, marry, kill. I don't say marry my wife, though. But then the fucking kill becomes complicated. Um, I'll mull it over based on how much the both of you laugh, okay? Cool. Any final questions or anything? Oh, what's up? Are you celebrating anything today? Are you guys celebrating anything today? That was a prompt, I think, that I ripped out by accident. Whoa! Anybody celebrating anything? Me neither. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to become famous and it's going awesome so far, right? Um, I'm not good at any of the stuff you get famous for. Um, so like singing, can't do it. Acting, no thanks. And even if I could, there's only one like thing I could be in and it's fun home and that's all. So it's like fine that I'm not good at it. 
Um, I can't really play any instruments or dance, duh. You see me. You see me. I can't dance. Um, so I'm trying stand-up comedy. And so far it's going great. It's going great. And this is kind of my last shot, folks, okay? If this doesn't work, um, I swear to God I'll make a sex tape. And it's not gonna be hot. <laughs> It's gonna be me and my wife, Olivia. Everybody say, hey, Olivia. Hey, Olivia. It's gonna be our once a month to six weeks um, <laughs> sex. Uh, it's gonna be very vanilla, as far as lesbian stuff goes. Won't be scissoring. <laughs> um, and, and it'll culminate with us crying in one another's arms. And I swear to God, okay, I'll email it to every single one of you if you don't laugh a lot louder than what you're doing. Got it? Right. I've tried it all. I have a whole degree in theater and I've never been cast in shit, okay? Except the local house improv team recently. Um, so that's probably gonna be good as well. Anybody like improv? Give me a location. Where? Never been. Okay, if I don't get famous while I'm alive though, I have realized I can, I can do it posthumously. That's how you say the word, I looked it up, okay? Um, but that kind of sucks, right? Because then you don't know. You don't know that you're famous. Have I said um at all? No. That's why I'll see zero dollars in my demo account after this. Right? He's just stoned. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can get famous after you've died, right? For example, um, Van Gogh. You know? You guys heard of Van Gogh? No one, none of his contemporaries had, okay? Um, so I'd like to imagine maybe like Picasso gets to heaven However many thousands of years after Van Gogh has died and he says and he says oh Van Gogh Thank you so much for all you've done for me. You're an inspiration Yada yada and Ben says huh and then so Picasso turns to the other ear and he goes Benson Thank you so much That was a little Vincent Van Gogh cutting off his ear go. Yeah, or the people on the Titanic, right? They just thought they were rich, white, and going on a cruise. They didn't know that they were about to be the inspiration for um, a movie, and then a musical, and then a spoof on the musical, and then a play as well, I think. Um, and then they also inspired those billionaires to go down there again to find their bodies. That sucks, you know? You're so famous, and for what? And for what? I chose, um, fuck, kill, sorry. <laughs> um, you guys heard of Bach? Yeah. No one else did either. I'm saying it to this part of the, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so if, I, you know, I could run for office, I guess, but I don't really want to, I'd win. So it's kind of the after, it's either while I'm alive, after I'm dead, after I'm dead would suck. Here's another way you can get famous after you're dead, okay? Anybody thinking of donating their bodies to science? Yes. For real or just being nice? No, I like to, yeah. Really, why? I'm a teacher, so I feel like it's another gift. I could like someone to learn. Have you, I know, I'm a worse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm very aware of the channel. Everybody say it with me, gay! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm like really sorry. Uh, okay, so when you die, you can donate your body to science, okay? And it could go a couple of different ways. It could go the awesome way, okay? They discover a cure for whatever you've died from, and then your skeleton gets to live in the Smithsonian. And then millions of people come from far and wide every single business day to see you, right? Or, you know how they had skeletons in seventh grade biology? <laughs> So that's kind of the risk there that I think you, you especially as a teacher, need to consider. <laughs> okay. I read a whole book. It was like a whole thing. Wait, what was the book? It's what called, was the book? Um, Stiff. Stiff. Yeah, yeah, I read yeah, Stiff. Yeah, that was yeah, a good yeah, book. Yeah. Who's read Stiff? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> it spooked me a lot, but I did like it. You don't want to do that your body. No, okay. I'll never die. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> anyway, you could end up Smithsonian, right? You could end up finding, finding an incredible cure, or you could end up in seventh grade biology, okay? Where people are constantly looking at you, they're saying, guys, check this out, teacher turns around, okay? And then they go, and they jerk you off. 
they jerk you off in front of all your classmates and they think it's hilarious. That could be your fake for one billion years when the world is still happening, there's still school, and jerking off is still funny. <laughs> How much time do I have, Lucy? I got like three minutes. What should I talk about? Anybody got any questions? You got a question? I think it's going better than before. Hell yeah. too liberally, right? So like every indie band will be like, we're going on tour, we're gonna be at this one brewery in this little town, and then the next day, get this, different brewery, different town, it's the tour. So I've decided I think I'll go on tour, if that's okay. Not for stand-up, just for my activities. So, um, like tomorrow I'm heading to the dentist on Monument Avenue. Around 8.30, if anyone would like to come, okay? Uh, day after that, heading to Roanoke. 540, right? I'm gonna play canasta with my mom on the porch. <laughs> Doors at 2.30, show at 3. <laughs> BYOB, $5 donation suggested. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I think words have meaning and that one's been perverted, going on tour. Um, my wife's not listening, so this is going well. Does anyone have any thoughts? What do you think? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Lucy, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, she said the same thing. Oh, one-liner? Yeah, okay. Why did the, uh... <laughs> Here's a one-liner on the line. Uh, what can you do to make an octopus laugh? Not even curious? What can you do to make an octopus laugh? Why? Give him ten tickles. Why? I've been Hannah Man. Okay, can you clap for me though? Lucy's looking upset. All right, I meant a one-liner that you wrote. Fucking dingleberry. Uh, he didn't take a pause. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> this was comedy at Pizza Bones. Have you guys had fun this evening? We'll do it again, and if you don't, then we won't. And that's as simple as that. Um, I've been Lizzie Benino, your host. Please tip us. Uh, and uh, that's that. Good night. I love you all.